all know that if you go in Burgundy or in California or in Oregon and you take a vineyard and then you go 300 yards or 300 meters away, that the wines can be very different in a really short period of space. And my idea was to try to understand how that period of space actually changes the wine. So within an AVA or between AVAs, these four factors, I think, have a really strong effect on identity, on the terroir specificity. And so they're essentially the soil type, which is essentially in Oregon we have several different soil types, but two that are dominant. One is volcanic soils, which are relatively young in the last volcanic era, uh, measured in tens of thousands of years. Um, and these are essentially eroded, high iron clays with volcanic origin. Then the second major soil type in the valley are very much older sedimentary soils. Soils that were essentially under the ocean and these are aged in tens of millions, not tens of thousands, but tens of millions of years old. And these essentially are, are, are soils that created from the sedimentary deposits in the oceans. And then though that, that essentially area that was under the ocean originally millions of years ago off the Oregon coast, those, that area under the water was pushed up and became dry land. And so those soils are derived primarily from what used to be ancient ocean floors, much like Chablis and Burgundy were ocean floor soils. These are sedimentary soils that got pushed up out of the ancient oceans. This is more recent than what you'd find in Chablis, which is measured in hundreds of millions of years, but still quite old. These ocean floor soils were pushed up folded into the coast range and into the valley. And these soils tend, compared to the clay soils, they tend to be um, less nutrient rich. And they tend to be, they have less water holding capacity, so they're droughtier. So the soil then will affect what the vine eats and what it drinks in a very, very basic way. So the soils that are volcanic in origin have more food and more water. And the soils that are sedimentary in Oregon, in origin have less. That's the basic factor. But then it gets a little more complicated because if you have a soil that's very rich, but you don't have very much of it, maybe it's only 12 or 18 inches deep, the vine, although see, it sees the food in the top, Oregon is a very dry place. It doesn't rain very much in the summer. In fact, we haven't had any rain in this vintage. Now we're in the middle of August. We haven't had any rain since the 22nd of June. And that's not a drought for us, that's just normal. It doesn't rain much in the summer here. So the soils that are very thin, even if they're relatively rich and can hold water, those soils dry out and the vine starts to lose its water source and starts to stress a little bit and have a more difficulty in doing its job of growing grapes and growing leaves and the canopy, things it has to do. In the Dundee Hills, for example, the soils, the volcanic soils are very, very deep, six to 10 feet deep. And in the Dundee Hills, that vine is not going to run out of water. It's not going to run out of food. It can send its roots 10, 20 feet deep. It can explore all of those deep sediments down there, all of those clays, and essentially find the food it needs. And it can continue to grow and be reasonably happy throughout the growing season. Again, in the Old Amity Hills here, we have very similar soils, but they're much thinner, and they tend to drought out. So that's the second factor. The third factor has to do with the environment. And essentially, we have this wind that blows off the coast in the evening called the Van Duzer Corridor, through what's called the Van Duzer Corridor. And the cold wind cools the vine and shuts the vine down. Now, the basis for acidity in a wine is essentially related to nighttime temperatures. If the vine the environment gets dark and it's warm, the vine continues to be metabolically active. It needs food. And the vine thinks that the sugars that it's made from photosynthesis during the day are too valuable to use as a food source at night. So the vine eats acidity. That's what it uses for food. However, if the temperature drops very rapidly as the sun sets to below 60 degrees, the vine goes to sleep. It stops eating acid. So essentially, this thing that you think, well, what, 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 who cares what happens at night? But all of a sudden, what happens at night is very important for the structure of wine. Because remember, Pinot Noir is not just about tannins. 
Cabernet, Merlot is very much about its tannin structure, not so much about its acidity. But Pinot Noir doesn't stick in the wine as many tannins as you would find in Cabernet. The grape has a lot of tannins in the skin, but they don't stay in the wine. They, a certain amount of them suspends itself or essentially incorporates itself into the finished wine, but not nearly the level that you would have in Cabernet. So the structure of Pinot Noir is inherently different than you would see with Cab, Merlot, and other red varietals, other warmer red varietals. Essentially, the Pinot Noir structure is a balance between the amount of tannin and the amount of acid. So if you change the environment to give the wine essentially more acidity, in other words, a place that cools rapidly at night, the vine doesn't burn up the acid, you get into the harvest and there's more acidity in the wine, in the juice, in the grapes, and then into the wine, you have a wine with an inherently different structure than if you have a place that's warm at night. In Oregon, the cold weather doesn't just uniformly show up in the valley. The cold winds come off the ocean, through the Van Duzer Corridor, which is the only break in a 3,000 set of foot set of mountains that separates the Willamette Valley from the ocean. The mountains are all the way along the coast are about 3,000 feet. Only at the Van Duzer Corridor does it drop down to 600 feet. And the winds, they're not stupid, they just, that's where they go. That's where, and, and so the winds that come through the Van Duzer really blow almost like a banshee as the sun sets. And as the closer you are to the mouth of the Van Duzer, the more rapidly the temperature drops. And the farther away, the more hot air that's accumulated in the valley has to cool down. And it doesn't cool down rapidly. It cools down slowly because there's a lot of hot air out here. Not just from politicians, but they're just hot air in the middle of the valley. And so the winds have to mix with the hot air and it cools down more and more slowly. So the area very, very close, the Old Amity Hills and the Mickeminville Appalachian, which are very close to the mouth of the Van Duzer, cool more rapidly. The wines have a little more acidity. They tend to have a little more spice in them. That's the other flavor component that seems to go along with a little more acidity. The area of the Chehalem Mountains and the, and the Dundee Hills are the farthest AVAs in the Lamb Valley away from the mouth of the Van Duzer. More hot air to cool down. The winds are still blowing, but the temperatures don't descend as rapidly. And so those wines have a little bit lower acidity, they're a little softer, the spice component is not as intense in those wines. It's more of a nuance rather than a signature component in those AVAs. And so you have often you have more perfumey, more floral components in grapes farther away from the mouth of the Van Duzer. The last component is how hot is it in the day. And that, like in California and anywhere, the warmer it is in the day, the more sun and the more heat is, is, is in the environment of the skin of the grape. And if the grape just is inherently warmer and sunnier, it creates more tannins in it. So there are most of the Oregon AVAs are inter interspersed or interconnected sets of hills. So if you look around you, you see a hill there, a hill there, a hill, hills all around you. And so those are not inherently hot places. The hills are cooler. You go up in the hill, it gets cooler. However, there are vineyards in the Willamette Valley that are essentially on a large hillside with very flat, large expanse of farmland below it. And those vineyards uniquely have more heat that the vine experiences during the day. And, the, and generally, in those sites, the wines have more tannin in them because the grape has a chance to ripen its skin and develop more tannins actually in the skin because of that essentially extra heat. And so in those particular vineyards, you see bigger tannins, more, more tannin structure. And you'll see this also in a long set of hills. The, the lower sections of the hill will have more heat than way up at the top. And so you have more of this kind of intense tannin structure. And the McMinnville AVA, especially on the southern edges of that AVA, is essentially a large hill, a set of hills that essentially backs up to the coast range of mountains, but with a very flat, hot valley, more than 100 square miles of flat, hot farmland that radiates heat up in the day. And so the McMinnville AVA, comparatively, being closer to the Van Duzer, is very warm in the daytime, and with its proximity to the Van Duzer, suddenly very cold at night. 
And what people have found is that these wines have more intense structure, more dark flavors, more intense spiciness. Often people describe almost a kind of coffee or cocoa overtones into these wines. It's not because the winemakers say, oh, I want to make a different wine. It's because the heat of the day, combined with a very sudden, huge temperature drop in the evening, creates just a different profile of tannin in the skin. When you make wine from grapes that are grown in that VA, AV8, the wine is going to reflect that very different structure, more acidity and more tannin, more power.